And welcome everybody to a lovely, and I do mean it this time, I mean I've been saying lovely for how many weeks, and of course I was just kidding, being facetious, but uh, it is a lovely Friday evening, and I appreciate you being with us here tonight. I'm Steve Jones on the Hunting and Fishing Show, and can you zoom in on this just a hair? You don't have to get real crazy with it, Jason, or Jared, uh, uh, Jason, uh, I'm sorry, Jared. You'll pay for that. Folks, this may not look like much to you, but it means a lot to me. This is, it's an your average ordinary reel, but this is the last thing that I have of my grandfather's. Old Pop, now his name, I call, I call John <laughs> Pop too, so, uh, but old Pop it was a, a heck of a fisherman, and this is all I have left of him, and this is my memory of my Pop, and, it, and it's just funny that my grandfather left me something that your grandfathers and great-grandfathers built Actually, here in Akron, right. Ohio. Mm -hmm. And folks, let me introduce my guest tonight, and we're going to go through a, a, a history of fishing that is just mm -hmm. unbelievable. Um, the Fluger boys are here with me, and, and the guy in the middle is a guy I so affectionately call Pop. He's John. You're the third. I am the. I'm Junior. Okay, you're Junior, and you're the third. I'm the and third. John's been here uh, many times. John's been here many times. Old Pop, this is his first time. And folks, we wanted to do a, a, a fishing history tonight from Akron, Ohio, and about Akron, Ohio, and it's the Fluger uh, Bait Company. And this is a Fluger Akron, and you're telling me that this was made uh, right around 1960, late mid, 50s, early mid 60s? Mid 50s, mm -hmm. And um, I remember fishing with this. You know, Pop left this to me when he passed away, and I've got two of these, so I give them to my boys. And um, Anybody grew up that can cast one of those bait casting yeah. reels? You can cast anything on the market. Oh, I know. This thing was the hardest thing that, in the world. That is an old Mr. Thummer. Well, yeah. you know, it was just a couple of years ago, the original braided line. And now, is that all they used to have back then, John? Back then was uh, braided line, absolutely. And that was it. Well, the original black braided line That's it. Uh, up until a couple of years ago was still on here. And that mm -hmm. line must have been 30 years old. But... Um, this is, folks, you're looking at fishing history right here all over. <laughs> it looks like a mess, but we're pretty well organized here on the table. We've, we've got it from the late 1800s right up to late 60s when Fluger left Akron. Yeah, and we are going to see some reels that there's only one of. Mm -hmm. Am I right. correct? That's correct. Mm -hmm. And we go from reels that were probably, now back then, you know, today bait casters are, are normally used for like bass fishing and, bass and, and fishing. some walleye mm -hmm. fishing. But back then, this is all they had. That and the fly rod, and that was about it. Yeah. The fresh water. Now, it looks like you've got some early Fluger fly reels, too, that yeah. we're going to yeah. look I'm at. Yeah, I'll show you the different variants between the early ones and later. Okay, and then there's some uh, spin cast or the push button ones. Why don't we start out by, you know, going back to what got us into the fishing tackle? We can do that. Huh? Would we that can be do the best yeah. thing to do? Yeah, yeah. hang on. Your... Get your, you get your thing, because i got a couple of things I want to do here, and then I want to show that, uh, that catalog. Um, Turkey hunters. By the way, John uh, Jr. or the third is uh, Baldy over here. Oh wait. Oh. <laughs> hey, now I haven't done that to you in a long time. I I told Dad coming over here, yeah. if you call me Baldy, I'm not going to bring bring that quiche that you fell in love oh. with last oh. <laughs> turkey hunting. Folks, I got to tell you, I, I'll tell you that story in just a minute. Anyway, um, they're going to have a special. Uh, turkey controlled turkey hunt out of Beaver Creek in uh, Wildlife, or I'm sorry, Mosquito Creek Wildlife, on the 29th. Did you know about that? Yes, I'd heard about. Oh, okay. It. Mm -hmm. uh, they're going to have sp special youth hunts as well as non-youth hunting opportunities out there, and that's going to be March 29th. That's and great. make sure you Don't get out to uh, Beaver mm -hmm. Creek and also Mosquito. Now, the Summit or the Portage Summit Field and Stream Club is going to do something that I have never heard of before, and. Um, Boy, I tell you what, these guys are, are really going to have a nice turkey hunting clinic. This is basically for first-time turkey hunters only. Now, they say that they're going to give young hunters age 16 and under first preference to this, and there is absolutely no charge. Uh, April 5th and 6th, out at the Portage Summit Field and Stream Club on Route 224. I think that's Randolph, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. It's not too far from Atwater. Um, the deadline to register, folks, is March 31st. And the number that you have to call is 253-2893. Uh, now, if you've never been turkey hunting, or if you're a turkey hunter and you want to take your kids for the first time, for free folks, now listen to this. This is what they're going to do on Saturday. They're going to start at 8 o'clock and go till noon. 
It's basically, uh, it's going to be like a classroom type of thing. Um, they're going to provide you lunch for free. Then uh, from 1 until 4 in the afternoon on Saturday, they're going to have field practice. And this includes scouting, which is my favorite part of turkey hunting. And they're also going to do some shotgun patterning. Um, now on Sunday, starting at 5.30 in the morning, that's right, that's, that's, we get up at what, 4? I think so it's 4 or 4 30 4.30 yeah. to get ready to get out there. It's, this is going to start at 5.30 because this is when you have to start hunting turkeys. I mean, you have to be there. Uh, till 9 o'clock, they are going to have a simulated turkey hunt on the club grounds. And there's a lot of nice woods. And that area of the county, folks, in Portage County, is loaded with turkeys. That's where they, first, they did some of the first uh, trap and transfer in Portage County. They turned them loose in the Atwater Randolph area. Um, absolutely no charge. The number, once again, 253-2893. Uh, elsewhere, and this is everybody is welcome. Cleveland, Canton, whatever. The 1 800 number is 800 282 3557. I don't know how many of you know Ernie, but Ernie Davenport is going to be teaching this class. Ernie is just a class guy, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So we'll tell you more about that. Also, I want to remind you if you're going to the Cleveland Sports Show this weekend, and I'll be there walking around with my lovely wife tomorrow. I hope you'll, if you see me, you'll stop and say hi. You can get the Ohio Sportsman's Atlas for $18. The regular deal is $20 bucks up there. But you've got to mention the Hunting and Fishing Show. Just say, hey, I saw it on the show, or I saw Steve Jones say it, or whatever. $18 bucks for people, for the folks that watch the Hunting and Fishing Show. Don't leave home. Do not go into the woods. Do not plan a fishing trip or a hunting trip, camping, boating, whatever, without having one of these. This is a, it's worth $118, but a special 18 bucks at the Cleveland Sports Show. Let's look at this catalog. That's the cover. This is the cover of the catalog from an it's an old one. late 1800s, early 1900s. That's right a black and white. Normally those are four color, but it's uh -huh. just a black and white picture uh -huh. of. And this goes back to the late 1800s. Late so. 18 it. it Probably on that one is 1908, 1909, wow. give or take five years. Mm. That's Either incredible. Way. That is incredible. Now, you know how did gave, how did Pfluger start out? Well, you know who gave us this? No, who gave that to you? Was it McCullers? Um, yes. That came from a couple gentlemen that worked for Arbogast. Oh, and really? Had it laying yeah. around over there, and that's how you know I've gotten a lot of this stuff that we've had people. Realize that we're trying to put you a know, resemblance of equipment. I back saw Dick Cotus on your program. Yeah, there, what, three or four weeks ago. Well, it was a little bit longer than okay. that, but somewhere in that area. Right in there. Um, and I tried to call in here yeah. and talk to him. <laughs> the lines were busy. I couldn't well, get you, in. You know, Arbogast has been in Akron for oh, a long time. Also, early. 40s. I mean, Akron yeah. played a part, a big part, oh, in the early uh, fishing bet. industry. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of you competition bet. between Akron and the Ohio. Uh, fishing tackle manufacturers in the Michigan, up in Michigan, and mm. Dowanak, you had Hedden and Shakespeare. So, you know, each state had their own uh, uh, makers of fishing tackle, and mm -hmm. of course, felt that they were making the best. And I think we made the best. No, well, <laughs> I know you did. If my if my grandpa bought it, it was the best. <laughs> well, he was a good dude. You asked why or how did we get into fishing tackle? Mm -hmm. That's a it's a sort of a long story, but I'll make it as short as possible. You know what we need to do. What? Take a break. Why don't you hold that okay. thought? Can <laughs> we right. go ahead and take a commercial? Because I know once Pop gets talking, we'll have to hit him in the head with something to get him to quit. So you stay right there with us. We've got the Pfluger boys here with us tonight, and we're going to talk about fishing history on the Hunting and Fishing Show. And I, I hope you'll enjoy it. We'll talk to you on the phone here in just a few minutes. Welcome back to the Hunting and Fishing Show and Fishing History in Akron, Ohio. I'm Steve Jones, and the, both John Flugers are here. Pops in the middle, and John the, the third. Now you have another John at home, right? There's a John the fourth. No, he's a fourth. Mm -hmm. And we're going to show you John the first here in some old family pictures. Oh, cool! A little bit later on. I'm anxious to do that. Now, Pop, explain what what the folks are looking at right now. Well, these are our uh, bridal uh, rosettes. Uh, you'll see they're round, and on a bridle, a horse's bridle, the bridle comes up the side of the horse's face, goes up behind the ears, mm -hmm. and then there's a front strap that comes around their forehead. Okay. And where the two leather straps meet is where they put these things on. Okay, now I've seen those. I'm not now, much of a horsey guy. The but... reason that 
these, this thing got us into the fishing tackle was that great grandpa uh, decided, well, let's put, let's make a rosette for night mm -hmm. running, you know, for uh, running along at night. So they came up with a phosphorescent, one of these, uh, these glass rosettes. Mm -hmm. And um, I saw it worked out very, very well. I mean, it was exceptional. Yeah. And uh, they used the real old phosphorus type, type stuff, which is the radiant or, you know, it was a little bit dangerous to mm -hmm. use. But uh, in any event, they decided then to take that phosphorescent paint and put it on a fishing lure. And this is a small one of a tandem spinner. Here, let me hold that the back. Up. Okay. The back side of those spinners, there's phosphorescent paint. It's not the real high charge stuff. Uh-huh. Uh, but it will light up at night if you put a flashlight on it and then mm -hmm. pitch it in. Well, my grandfather had a great number of friends. One of them was B.F. Goodrich, Dr. Goodrich. No kidding. Yep. And the two of them were really the ones that came up with this idea and put it on a fishing lure. Now, where is it, where's it fluorescent at? On, on, on the, the, back on the side, spinners? On the underside. On, on the back side of the spinners. Oh, okay, I see it so now. It's sort of a yellow. Yeah. There now. yeah. If you take that, if you take those spinners right now and mm -hmm. stick it in the light mm -hmm. and then go into a dark room, that those uh, tandem spinners are still going on. Even, even after all these years? Yeah, those, yeah. those there on that card were probably done somewhere in the 1930s being in that purple box. Good night, nurse. But they, they're in perfect shape, and, and a lot of these lures, like this uh, magnet lure here with yeah. the red head, that's yeah. all fluorescent. A lot of this whole table would light up if we turned this turn room dark. Out, yeah. Can we try that? Yeah. <laughs> Can we turn the lights out and see what happens? What, Maybe uh, when we come back, what, we'll do that. Right. What's interesting is Fluger getting started in the horse bridle ornament business. A lot of collectors and people that uh, are into old fishing tackle don't realize that at the same time we were manufacturing fishing tackle, we were also in the horse bridle ornament business. And proof of it is right here on the back of, of this salesman's mm -hmm. uh, display board right here. I, I mean, know. you can see the hang tag, and it's dated 1934. Yeah. I don't have exact dates on how late they presented it, but Dad, you've got an old catalog there no, of just catalog. horse oh. bridle ornaments. And we got, out, after that particular catalog was uh, finished out, way, we got out of the horse, this is about 1934, mm -hmm. about in the middle part of the crash, and because uh, they were all going to gasoline engines mm -hmm. and all that stuff, mm -hmm. and the horses were on their way out. Huh. But that's what. But that's what this bait right here, and this bait was in the line when I left Fluger mm -hmm. back in 1969. That bait was in the line at that time, and uh, so we went from that into the fishing tackle. Now, John, you know where your oldest reels are. You want me to just keep going? Yeah, yeah, just, just, going. just going. yeah, because probably we wanna... the oldest piece we have here, and I, there's no way we're going to be able. We talked about it ahead of time. There's no way we're going to be able to show you everything. But probably the oldest piece that I brought this evening, not necessarily the oldest piece I have. And this has uh, been verified in some old catalogs I have. This is a Fluger. Which camera do you want that on? Oh, you there okay? With Jared there. This is a Fluger. Uh, summit uh, bait casting reel. They classify this as a raised pillar reel, and that's because it has these little raised pillars in this area. But this has jeweled end caps in red. They also made this, I believe, in black end caps with a counterbalanced handle, real ivory uh, uh, little uh, grips there, and they controlled the drag by these little levers up here that you could push in and out. But just a just a beautiful reel, and this is from uh, 1889. Well, you'll notice on here that this particular reel and the old first bait casting reels mm -hmm. had no double thread shaft. In other words, a, gu a guide for the line. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Um, uh, there was nothing to guide that. How did you keep the? You had to do it with your your thumb as you were as you're cranking in. Yeah. You had to do it with this thumb over here. God, with, the, with well, that were, braided line, I'm yes, sure that uh, uh, you had a little problem. Yeah, you had a little problem and with that. It led to a lot of backlashes, et cetera. So yeah. they came in with that, and that helped a lot. And they have a backlash control on that that's 
fairly good. Hmm. Right up in here. Yeah, that's incredible. That's incredible. And now where do we go from there? Okay. From from there, I mean, Fluger made hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands, of different reels and variations. This is the beginning of really the legacy. This is the first Fluger Supreme reel and mm -hmm. style that was originally made. It was made on a, uh, a Douglas patent in conjunction with ideas that uh, the Enterprise Manufacturing Company had. This one here is a very early one, uh, serial number 228. Wow. And I mean this thing, this thing just works like a charm. Mm -hmm. I mean you could load that up with line right now and take that. It's all nickel silver. Yeah. It's made to uh, survive the elements. Huh. This reel now does have the th double thread shaft, mm -hmm. but it doesn't have the loop like you have on right. yours. Right, right. This has, and if you watch this come down across here. Mm -hmm. There you go. You'll see, the, you'll see the little, this little side kick up. Right. And that, that picked up the line in here. And it will follow, your line will follow that as long My as you God. keep it tight in. And then when you when you go to cast, yeah, you reverse this handle. Uh huh. Make your cast. It's it's free spool, which was unheard of back yeah, in those days. Right. And uh, and then just crank forward and you pick it up. Well, what was up. kind of what was kind of interesting to me is from from this style, they went to the famous teardrop style. Mm hmm. Uh, this would be 1920s, right in there. Uh, this is still a serial numbered reel. This one's 18,523. But what's interesting is they went from a free spool uh, style reel mm -hmm. into a like a, a fixed uh, geared uh, type. Constantly in gear. Right. right. They call these the old knuckle busters because when you spin <laughs> these things out. Yeah. This old handle is just yeah. spinning a mile a yeah. minute. Mm -hmm. But this is a very early one. It's got the ivory handles on it. Uh, there were many, many variations of uh, Supremes, and, and we just brought some of them. This one also, on the early ones, if those of you that have them, if you look, this one is just a, it's got Fluger Supreme stamped into it, mm -hmm. where some of the, the later production ones, such as this model here, it's got it actually engraved stamped down into the side plate. Wow. So the real early ones are just kind of a, a roll printed stamping yeah, yeah. where this one's actually etched down into the yeah. metal. Hold that thought boys because when we come back we're going to talk, we're going to look at some really old lures. We're going to look at some more reels uh, provided tonight uh, by the, uh, the Fluger boys and uh, we'll be back in just a minute. Now, before we go any farther, by the way, I'm Steve Jones on the Hunting and Fishing Show. John and John Fluger here from the, the famous Fluger family. Uh, the famous. Uh, by the way, could I borrow, like, some money? <laughs> I got a couple bucks. On <laughs> from the Flugers. And I'm, I'm sure, uh, I don't know about a lot of some of the younger folks, but I'll bet the older folks remember, uh, you know, the guys over 40, like sure you, mm -hmm. uh, will remember the Flugers. And um, I knew I always did. And when I first met you, I said, Fluger, Fluger, Fluger. I wonder if he's one of the Flugers. And I remember I asked you one mm -hmm. day, and you said, yep. And I said, you're a liar. And he said, come <laughs> over to my house, and I'll show you that I'm a Fluger. <laughs> I, don't, I don't talk about it much. You know, there's a lot of people that get affected by different things. But I'm extremely proud of <laughs> the family and him and his grand, uh, his father and my great grandfather right on down the line. Where's that picture of uh, All uh, right, let me John get, the let First? Me, let me grab that. You know, while we're doing that, uh, while we're getting that picture, now you guys went, this This is an interesting old reel here, Pop. Why don't you tell us about this one? Well, John, well, that's that a, picture. almost a Woolworth special, five and dime stuff. That was about okay, as low end as Hold it up to Jared yeah. there so he can see that. If he can see this. That's a little one. This is a little devil. It's got a click on it. That's a, it's called a Portage Atlas. Uh huh. <laughs> and Fluger used a lot of names of the surrounding area, yeah. like Akron, Summit, Portage. Yeah, I can't get this. Huh. There it is. Here, let me have that picture of uh, 
All right, this is a picture of Dad's father uh, with a tarpon he caught back in the 1920s down in uh, Sarasota. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Who's yeah, coming in on this? Oh, are you doing it, Chris? Okay. That is an old picture of Dad. God, look at the size of that tarpon. That's, a hundred and I think, 195 pounds. God almighty. That is unbelievable. Now, that's your daddy, right? That's my father. Let me hand okay. you this. Now, this okay. shows the whole lineage. If you can get a close-up of that, I'll tell everybody who they're looking at. Okay. By the way, I'd like to thank Dick Wilson up in Kent for giving me this because I searched high and low. On the left, you're looking at one of the only pictures right there right of E.F. Fluger, the founder mm -hmm. of Fluger. Mm -hmm. Next to him in the center is my great-grandfather, dad's father, E.A. Fluger, who was absolutely the driving force of that manufacturing business. He was also one of the original founders of the uh, a fishing Tackle Manufacturers Association was president of that for many, no many, many that, years. That's my grandfather. That's man. your grandfather. And then dad's father is all the way on the far right. Let's get it right that's here. John S. Fluger Sr., my grandfather uh -huh. and dad's father. Right. Wow. Well, you look a lot like him. Well, it's, it's the hair. <laughs> <laughs> that's not what I meant, Pop. That's not what I meant. Boy, that is incredible. You know, there's there's not a lot of people that know their lineage. You know, that's, uh, oh, I wish I did. That'll be the last picture, but that's kind of a cute picture. That's a picture of my grandfather and father, I believe, up at the Cleveland. No, this is over in Chicago. Chicago Sports Show? Yeah. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. About what year, you think? Uh, really? 19, uh, about 1955. Well, they look like uh -huh. zoot suits, so. Oh, yeah. Dad's, it in the uh, summertime. Dad's about there on the left. In August. And, and his father's right next to him. And, and isn't it funny how you go to a sports show now, you'd never see guys dressed like this. Mm -hmm. I bet, did no. you guys go fishing in suits? No, no, <laughs> but in a show, uh, you have to understand, this is a manufacturer's show. Yeah. Uh, we, there were jobbers there. Oh. Not dealers, but jobbers, wholesalers. God, look at them shoes. Oh, and that's Lord a, have mercy. That's yeah. unbelievable. Chris yeah. probably wouldn't be caught dead in I lied. Today. This is the last oh, one. Oh, the last picture? This is something very special. Oh, I know who this is. You this, can tell. This is a picture of President Grover Cleveland. Yeah. And down at the bottom of that framed print uh -huh. is a letter that he wrote to my great-great-grandfather, E.F. Fluger, late 1800s. It's all personally signed by him, to, telling him how great the lures are, the luminous lures that he bought, no kidding. and how well they, they catch fish. Jeez. A lot of these pictures, a lot of the picture of my grandfather and that picture there, mm -hmm. any of you that were over in the old Enterprise Manufacturing Company on Union Street, those two pictures were right in the main hallway there mm -hmm. as you walked in, and thank God he... He saved them. Well, guys, we're running plain. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, we've, we, yeah, we've got calls like crazy here. This is uh, one of the bigger reels. That, okay, uh, this is a saltwater reel, yeah. trolling reel. Uh, it's a Templar, mm -hmm. and that reel was made between about 1922 and uh, 1935, or thereabouts, right in there. Now, you guys also made uh, you made fly reels. Fly reels. Night, Real, we'll buzz side. through these. This is a an early style medalist. Not that one. These are single action fly reels. We're driving these camera folks crazy. Uh, uh, okay, this is an early style medalist. It's got the metal center plate, and then just hold the camera right there, and I'll come right back up to you. This is the later production medalist. This is a 1498. It's got the plastic. But everything we're showing you was made mm -hmm. right here in good old Akron, Ohio. And then hold it right there. Last one, this is a Fluger Progress. Uh -huh. It's got amber handles, uh, nickel uh, plating on the, the, uh, the center with a, a kind of an off, beautiful reel, kind of an off uh, grayish color. This is made back in the 1920s, again with the raised pillar. Yeah. Uh, styles on them. They don't make reels like this anymore. No, they sure no. don't. They just don't. Um, how much time do we have? Okay, I heard you. I can hear you all the way in his headphones. <laughs> Stay with us and we'll talk some more back in just a minute.
Folks, welcome back to the Hunting and Fishing Show. Steve Jones here with the Fluger Boys. And uh, we could sit here and talk for eight hours with these guys, but uh, the phones are ringing like crazy, and I'm sure that some of you want to ask them some questions or whatever. Uh, tell us uh, real quick about some of these lures here that Fluger okay, made. Okay, what you're holding there, Steve, is a Fluger Monarch Minnow. It's got a V-shaped body. Mm -hmm. That's a very early one. It's, got, it's called a wire-through hook harness. Yeah. Uh, that came out in 1912, 1913, and it was only out for a few years. Uh, they found that they were, uh, had a patent infringement. They backed off and then went to the second style above it. Show them that one. Yeah, I That one right there that. is a never-fail five-hook uh, minnow. It's got a never-fail hook harness system on it uh, where the hook attaches to the body. That design was designed and patented by dad's grandfather E.A. Wow. Fluger. And then what is this one? Okay, here? that is the third style of hook harness you're going to see on Fluger lures. That style came out uh, 19, mid 1940s, 50s, right in there. And it's just a, a, a single screw with a little probe that goes into the side of the body. Huh. But those are the three style hook harnessing systems yeah. you find on Fluger Lewis. Now you say there's an interesting story here. That, that if any of you got color TVs, that is a baby surprise minnow, white head, black body. It's an extremely hard color to find. Mm -hmm. I nabbed that about 10 years ago. Dad and I were out fishing, and he wound up to make a cast. I wasn't mm -hmm. paying it because he's got an old tackle box. This is before I really yeah. got into this. Yeah. He started winding up to make a cast and I saw what was at the end of that line. He said, yeah. hey, William, you got a hang knot on there. And he goes, what? And I said, let me see that lure. He handed the lure over to me and I took yeah. a pair of snips and it cut it off and I've had that lure ever <laughs> He stole that from you, Pop. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Right off the end I, of your I, line. I'll tell you, Charlie, Charlie, what is it? Charlie, yeah. Yeah. Charlie Chin, number Charlie, one son. Number one son. Can you believe it. that? Well, it's a good thing he did, yeah. too, I'll tell you. Yeah. Boy, these are these all, are All three of those really are pretty rare. Lures. Do you know how many people, especially the musky baits, have copied this design? Mm -hmm. I've seen yeah. that. I mean, it's incredible. Mm -hmm. Uses absolutely a jerk bait. incredible. Folks, we could sit here and talk for hours, but the phones are going crazy. Aaron, why don't you go ahead and put the phone numbers up, and uh, let's go ahead and, you guys want to take some calls? What sure. do you think? Yeah, Hi, welcome to the Hunt and Fishing Show. Hey, Steve, how you doing? First We're, time caller. Hey, well, don't be the last time. No, sir, man, I like your program. Very good, interesting thing. Thank you. Say say hello to Pop and John. How you doing, Pop John? Howdy, how are you? i got an old fishing lure that was made out of a broomstick handle. And it's got a piece of flange up around by its eyes and three-way hooks, two sets of three-way hooks. And this lure is so radical in the water that the bass go nuts over it. It oh. has no one dimension. It, it just goes everywhere. Hmm. Who made it? An old man. Just have a broomstick. No kidding. I mean, it goes nuts. Well, if we were still in business, we'd want to take a look at that. Well, I can <laughs> get my tackle box, and that's going to cost you. <laughs> <laughs> Is it is it a surface bait? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. It, it, it's it, like a uh, uh, I wanted to say a, a jig, some type of like a, a jig bug, but it's not. Well, do you sit there? Left and right and it's a jerk bait, probably jerk. something like this. Uh, probably something like this old yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah, an injured minnow. Hey, Steve. Yeah. Have you got your GPS out to play with yet? Yeah, I have. Oh, well, I just got one also. Yeah, we are going to do a show with uh, Vic or Tommy, one of the two from Vic Sports Center. We're going to talk about GPSs. Well, when? Um, soon. They're at the Cleveland Sports Show this week. Okay. Next week, we're going to talk about steelhead fishing, and from what I hear, uh, it's it's real soon is going to be the time. If they're not in already, it's going to be real soon. Well, I want to try to find out what the water temperature is up at Mosquito. Yeah, I'm not sure. But I know some guys are catching some fish up there. Yeah, All right. Hey, well, I, thank you. Hey, call again. No problem. Bye bye. Hello. Yeah, hello, Steve. Hey, how you doing? I got some questions for uh, the Fluger boys. Now, my aunt, she used to be Ernest Fluger's private secretary. No kid. That was uh, uh, been so long ago. Uh, Martyr was her last name. Uh, I think it was Hazel Martyr. And my mom used to take uh, stuff home and tie flies at home. Well, That's incredible. I'll, I'll tell you, I do remember uh, a Hazel Martyr. I'm sure it would probably be the same woman. 
and uh, she was a very, very fine person, I'll tell you. Yeah, uh, she uh, was my aunt, my mom's sister, and uh, my mom used to tie flies at home. Huh, I'll be there. And I still have an Akron reel. Hang on to it. Oh, hey. <laughs> yeah, tell me these oh, are hey. worth some money. Tell me these are worth some money. They are. At least ten to twenty thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I quit. This is the last show. I'm leaving. <laughs> okay, thank you. Hey, we'll see you. Nice to talk to you, sir. Isn't that weird? Yeah. Isn't that weird that you, we would you meet someone? You cannot somebody? believe <laughs> the amount of people that I know come up to dad yeah. that come yeah. up to me too yeah. and tell me my aunt used to work there, my yeah. father wow. used oh, to yeah. work there. That's incredible. At one time they employed over 500 to yeah. five to 700 people. In Akron. Back in, that was Akron back in the alone. 50s. Wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hello on the phone. Hey, Steve, how are you doing? What's up? Hey, it's Larry. Hi, Pop, John. Oh, hey, Larry Barney. Hey, yeah, how are you doing? Good. Hey, Good. do they have any musky lures? Mm -hmm. Yes. Where, this one strawberry. here? Strawberry, that was a good one, yeah. Uh, oh, this one, one here? Yep. That's not quite as big as the one. Oh, no, they're not. You know, Back then, I don't think that they did. You guys make real big lures back then for musky? Yeah, this would be about the well, you don't have this was real giant Mustang, do you? This is real popular. This is the Fluger you, Glow. You use it, John? Not this one anymore, Larry. I don't. That's the Fluger <laughs> Globe, and then we made a, a, a series of uh, uh, metal lures the Fluger yeah, Muskill, uh, Bearcat. We, we did make. Quite a few larger lures. Fluger yeah. also experimented with uh, Fluger Mustang minnows. You know, in the 10 inch, they call it the saltwater mm. or large, extra large saltwater series. But it was never commercially put out on the market. This is another one too here, huh? That's, That's one of Dad's favorites. <coughs> this, uh, that color. Seems that muskies just love this color. I have a bait that's almost like this color. Uh, well, this color is dynamite for muskies. And uh, we occasionally went up to Bob Cage in Canada. Yeah. And they had called this particular color of this uh, bait a strawberry blonde. Yeah. Well, since then, I've gone down to Florida, and down there, it's a rotten banana. So. Oh, really? <laughs> there you Some go. people even. But this this color is a, is a killer for a bus. Some game. people call it Christmas tree, too. Yeah. There's yeah. one thing I would like to say about the uh, pattern day. Coming up April 6th. Oh, I was going to mention at the end of the show, but go ahead. Okay, out at the Goodyear Hunting Fishing Club. Uh, it's open to anybody between 1 and 4. We'll have all the latest rounds out there. We'd appreciate anybody coming out and patronizing. Oh, we're going to talk about it a lot more before April 6th, Larry. Okay, it's a rain or shine event. Oh, and it was raining last year. Okay, hey, John, I'll get back with you later. Okay. See you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Okay, if you're on the phone, stay there. When we come back, we'll talk to you. Okay, folks, we want to show you a couple of more lures here real quick, and these go back. Uh, this is a kind of a strange one here. What's This that, is a wooden a, one? That's a wooden lure with chrome play, and it's called a Fluger Metalized Minnow, and that's from the late 1920s. So it's wood with a coat of steel over it. Mm -hmm. They made it in a, in a chrome oh. and also a copper. There's, there's huh. a few out there with copper on them. But Chris, why don't you back off a little bit, and I'll just show these other ones right here while we're here. And then uh, we got some, you guys made some uh, old uh, plastic stuff too, correct? Well, it was actually rubber. Rubber. And Latex. Akron being the rubber capital of the world, Fluger was one of the first to get involved in using rubber from huh. the rubber industry into fishing tackle. I'll and be these are going. some of the samples of Helgramite and, and uh, some of the different minnows that they made. Isn't that neat? Mm -hmm. Let's go back to the phones and see what's cooking over there. And uh, I'll hang on to these. You might not get them back. <laughs> Hello. How you doing, Steve? Pretty good. How about yourself? Not too bad. I got a question. I have. Did you guys used to make um, motors, like Elec trolling motors? Electric trolling motors. Electric yes. Trolling motors. Okay. Uh, what, what year would would that be? I have one. Uh, about 1967, 68. Okay. Sixty. Little switch on top, high, low. Yes. No, and, no reverse. Does it um, Does it say what was Phantom? It? Um. Say M5 on it? Yeah, M5. Okay. Right on top. Okay. 
I need a prop for that. Is there anything mm -hmm. that'll fit it? <laughs> There's mm. quite a few of the new bass catalogs that sell replacement props. Okay. Are advertising props for the old Fluger for the Fluger's. Phantom trolling. Really? Oh, yeah. <coughs> yeah. Uh, I got a nice suggestion for you, right. and that is, uh, you know, Shakespeare bought Fluger out. Okay. Around 69. Uh, they also had a line of trolling motors, and they handled replacement props for us, and I think I would get a hold of Shakespeare. Okay. That sounds like good. All right. Thanks for calling, man. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Hello. Hey, how you doing? Good to show tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I got a Fluger 3350 rod. About five foot long. Damn, we forgot to bring them rods out. Is it a is it a fiberglass rod, steel, or bamboo? It's a fiberglass. Mm -hmm. And I was just wondering about when that was made. I found it in the garage when I moved into my house. I've been using it ever since, and it's like the best rod I've ever had. Is this a tubular rod? Yeah, it's a two-piece tubular rod. Boy, and anywhere from the late late fifties up until around sixty-nine to seventy when mm. Fluger left Akron. Yep. Th this rod that you have, Steve, is a very early uh, fiberglass uh, version uh, that Fluger used. It's uh, nothing like the fiberglass we see on yeah. modern day rods, yeah. but that's it's got the yeah, uh, but that's strong speed though. lock grip yeah. on it. Yeah, you know we got to have you boys back again. Obviously, <laughs> we didn't we didn't touch any of the stuff, man. Hey, thanks for calling. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, thank bye you, bye. Sir. Hello. Hi. Hi. I'd like to ask John a question, please. Which one? Young John. Oh, this, Young John. This sounds like a good friend of mine. This is Bev. Hi. I I don't remember you being a good fisherman, but I. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're, you're hurting me now. <laughs> Coming for grouse with golf clubs anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Hunting grouse with golf clubs. There <laughs> you go. Good luck. I'm glad to see you. Nice to see you too, Bev. Thanks for calling. Bye bye. Bye bye, bye, -bye now. Hello. Yes, sir. Hi. Uh, Question for the senior gentleman there. Uh, call him Pop. It's okay <laughs> if we call you Pop. Sure, go okay. Ahead. All right. My uh, my father worked at Pflugers for 25 years. My uncle was the head of the reel department. His name was William Muck. Bill Muck. I sure remember old Bill Muck. Okay. And my dad's name was Adam Adams. He yes. Pflugers Supreme Spool. Yes. All right. He worked there for like 20. Absolutely. Years. I remember both gentlemen. As a young man, I grew up with the uh, green box with the white waves on it that had all the little this hooks right and there. reels and everything like that in it. This one right there? That, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> and when my dad passed away, my older brother who lives in Florida has all the fishing tackle. But, I mean, I will never forget those little green boxes. I mean, they had uh, every lure. Uh, I had an original metalist high rod and a 1492 Atlas fly reel, the ultralight in them. Oh, yeah. And, nice uh, nice that setup. Was, I mean, nice setup. I just reached right in front of his face, didn't I? <laughs> I'm sorry, no, Pop. Sorry. I didn't mean to do that. I forgot where I was at. This, this, well, this happens to people when they get around this kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, I just reached right in front of his face. I do it all the time. Hey, are you enjoying the show, talking oh, to these guys? Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. There, there's a lot of history here, guys. I'll tell a lot you of that. memories. I'm going to let John show them. Okay. This, yeah, go ahead. This reel here. I'll tell you the story. You're going to show that to Chris? Yeah, I okay, go ahead, Jared. Every president since... Hang on just a minute. Uh, okay. Thanks for calling, bud. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay, I'm sorry, Pop. Go ahead. Every president uh, up to Dwight Eisenhower uh, got one of these Golden Supreme Reels. And they are... It's it's a gold flashing on, on the particular reel. But yeah. Uh, Eisenhower on back. No had, kidding. You know, FDR had them and so forth. God. So how much How much time do we have, guys? We got two minutes. We got time for one, uh, a couple more phone calls. Hello. Hey, I really enjoy the format of your show. It's a lot of fun. Thank you. It, uh, now, you guys just sent those to the presidents and sent them to the mm -hmm. president. Wow. So wow. Well, well, then, I'm we, a, then we'd send the bill to the Secretary <laughs> of the Treasury. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, caller, go ahead. Yeah, I've got a. a Fluger Supreme here in the box with the original uh, uh, insert uh, manual, and it's an 18 model, 1893. Uh, you guys that's, know that's, that might be. It's like, kind of like it's got a cork uh, spool on the center. Uh, are you sure it's a Supreme reel? It says Fluger Supreme on the side. 
1893. Yes, yeah, see, mine says 1893. That's what I was going to say. 1893 is an Akron. That doesn't mean it's a model, does mm -hmm. it? Well, maybe the uh, uh, reel didn't match the uh, what, what came in the box. That's good. Well, that's a good point. I'm sure that reel is an Akron. If it has stamped into the side plate, 1893. No, that's what's on the uh, box and the uh, that's what's on the box and what's uh, on the uh, inside pamphlet. But what's on the uh, inside pamphlet? But what's on the you know itself? It says a supreme, but it's got a. Okay, uh, it's an acronym. Um, when we we'll come, come back, when we come back. Hey, caller, thanks. All right. We'll Hope see you, we buddy. Helped you. <laughs> well, this has turned out to be a great show. We'll have to get you guys back. We'll be back in just a minute. Take some more calls. Welcome back, everybody, to the Hunting and Fishing Show with the Fluger gentlemen. And real quick, because we got some other calls I want to do, explain this board. These, to me. I, I wanted to try to bring a, a slew of a little bit of everything we did. These are some original sales sample boards. Mm -hmm. I believe the one you're holding, Steve, uh, they used at shows like the Chicago Show or Cleveland Show mm -hmm. up on their display. The one Dad's uh, showing here, the limper, limper trolling spoon. Uh, was put together by a Pfluger sales rep by the name of Les Allen back in the late 1938s. Uh, all of it's documented on the backside. But a lot of the salesmen made up boards like this, carry mm -hmm. with them in the car when they it's made sales calls. Boards. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. yeah, then I have a prototype reel here that this is the only one that was ever made. This is one of the one. very few. It's, it's really the only one in existence now. Uh, this is what, what we were going to come up with and call it the Super Supreme. Wow. It uh, has uh, 10 ball bearings in it, and uh, it's a little bit rough now because yeah. I've used the double. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's try to get these last calls that we mm -hmm. got here. Hi, thanks for holding on. Yeah, hello. Hi there, how are you? Steve? Yeah. Yeah, I'm talking to Pop. Hey, Pop, do you, uh, you ever down to uh, Cape Hatteras, North Carolina, back in the late 50s, early 60s? <laughs> oh, boy, you're talking about some of the best fishing I've ever done in my life. My dad and I went down there a lot, and uh, you let us borrow your beach buggy down there. with the yellow and red? Yeah. <laughs> yeah it was a stripped down, stripped down Mercury. Yeah, we Coop. had that for a week. Uh, it was a great machine. Yeah, it was. Uh, we did a lot of fishing down there. The uh, brakes finally gave out on it. <laughs> oh, the only way to stop it was to run it into a sand dune, which, <laughs> wasn't, which <laughs> wasn't hard to find. <laughs> it was, uh, wasn't much. Yeah, it wasn't much to that. I mean. Well, that's right. <laughs> hey, I hate to cut you short, but I got like two more calls I got to get to. Okay. All right. Thanks for calling. Okay. Thanks okay. for calling, sir. You know what? We'll do this again, guys. Hello. Hi guys, great show. Love it tonight. Thank you. Thanks. I've got the most unusual Fluger uh, fishing rod in my basement that I've ever seen. It's a Fluger Rocky River. It's mm -hmm. a six-sided bamboo mm -hmm. oh. rod. Mm -hmm. When was that made? It's that was bamboo. made back in the 1920s, early 30s. We haven't been able to get to it, but yeah. I've got, it's not a rocky, uh, it may be a rocky river over in the tube over there, but, but Fluger uh, got into manufacturing rods in the split bamboo, then they went off into the steel rods, which I have over there, we haven't been able to pull out. Yeah. And then they went into the fiberglass, and of course, uh, now the Fluger rods are still being manufactured by Shakespeare in the borons and mm. ultra graphites and things like that. That's but that's incredible. a real old rod. Is it in good shape? It. It, it looks like it's brand new out of the box. It belonged to my wife's father. It's, oh got, a, it's got a Fluger uh, Supreme reel on it. Oh, boy. Keep it just the way it is. Keep it out of any Take kind of damp of environment. Yep, it's got, it's got the old braided line on it from probably from one of my yes. wife's. Hey, I'll give you 10 bucks for it. <laughs> uh, 15. <laughs> 20. 25. You mean the braided line? <laughs> hey, thanks for calling. Bye-bye. <laughs> Hi, one more call. Hello. Hello. How are you? Okay. I'd like to talk to somebody about this old uh, Fluger lure I got. Okay, shoot. It's a um, porpoise hide phantom minnow. Mm -hmm. It's still on the original card and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. People down there. What you have uh, is a line of lures that Fluger came out with a uh, long, long time ago, back at the turn of the century, 1900s up into the 20s. Those lures were all lures that were designed or patterned after original lures that were being manufactured over in England. Um, it was a, 
I would say it was a, probably a pretty good lure for the time and probably caught some fish. Big problem is with that uh, uh, hide that's on there, they through the years deteriorate pretty uh, readily. But that's what you have. It's got two little spinners or blades up in the front. Yeah, blades and yeah. three treble hooks. And take, take care of it. I've got quite a few of those myself and some prototypes from England. Uh, very collectible lure. Just take care of it again. Keep it out of the moisture. And I try to put all my stuff in plastic bags just mm. to protect them a little bit. But it's a good yeah. piece. Hey, thanks for calling. Okay. Bye bye. You, you guys have got to come back. You've got to come back. Will you come back like maybe uh, April or May? Because I know you after here. turkey hunting. Now. Well, you're going to be here pr twice in April. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're going to do big turkey hunting shows uh, twice. Hopefully with John in April. Next week, we're going to talk about uh, steelhead fishing. Uh, maybe May. Why don't we do this? I won't be here in May. He's going to be gone. Why don't we maybe put something together and do it in the fall? Okay, we can do that. Do well, after he gets fall. back. Yeah, yeah, I'll give the folks something to look forward to. And we'll, yeah, I'll right. try to bring some prototypes, yeah, some hey, what special other, stuff. Hey, what other show on TV can you talk to the Pfluger boys right in person? You can't. Folks. We give Steve we're Jones our exclusive rights. We won't talk to <laughs> anybody else. <laughs> hey, you have a great week. Enjoy the weather because it's supposed to snow. And uh, we'll see you next Friday.